What's going on, Internet? Welcome to another episode of It Builds Character. Let me know how uh, the audio sounds for you guys. It sounds a little loud for me, but I'm going to turn it down internally and turn it up for you guys. Um, but anyway, let me know how the audio sounds. It looks like I'm well out shouting the audio, so that should be good. So, uh, it's another Wednesday, and unlike what happened almost every time in the past, I am gonna be doing another episode of It Builds Character here on Nerd Immersion. What is It Builds Character, you may ask? I'm gonna actually just, I think, come up with a chat command, or possibly like a on-screen overlay I can flip to going forward, um, but I'm still working that out. Also, ignore my lovely shop vac that's right here for you guys to see because I'm doing all sorts of renovations and work down here in the D&D room and on the stairs and the man cave in general. Uh, so, what is It Builds Character? It is a show that designed by me out of my pure love... You know what? Let's start the music over. Uh, out of my pure love for building characters in Dungeons & Dragons. So, my favorite thing to do in all video games, but RPGs specifically, is to design characters. I spend hours, uh, it's less difficult, uh, less, uh, I guess, more intensive. It's less intensive in 5th edition, uh, but I spend hours pouring over tomes. I used to do it all the time in 3.5, where I would look at every single option, every single race, feat, class, magic item, you name it, I would do it, because that's something that I actually enjoy. I recognize that that's not for everybody, and that's really not what this show is about so much as me taking your guys' suggestions for a character, anything from a pop culture character that actually exists, or a less so pop culture character that we're going to talk about tonight, or something as simple as a character concept. I've done things like a Warforged Pirate, which I actually should go back and update now that Warforged have officially been released. I did a polearm wielding Bugbear. Build a character at level 20, but with one in each class. Well, whatever kind of crazy stuff you guys come up with, I will build. But more often than not, you guys want to see your character from your favorite comic book, your favorite anime, cartoon, movie, whatever it is. You want to see them translated to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. And I do my very, very best to make that as, you know, as relevant and, and as easy to do as possible. So on It Builds Character, that's the spiel. That's what I do. Uh, I have a big, long running list, which I will show you guys towards the end of this, uh, with things you've already suggested. We're already good through July of this year, based on your suggestions. Uh, but the list always keeps on growing, so feel free to throw stuff out, and I will add to that list. I also build the characters all with a same set of parameters, so that everything is relatively within reason and we have a common playing field every character is built at level 12. Uh, every character is built using the standard array stats as described in the player's handbook which is 15 14 13 12 10 8 and i try to limit all homebrew as minimal as possible usually the only place where we expand and go into homebrew is in the world of magic items or in things where they are fundamentally almost impossible to do, like a Jedi or Iron Man. Uh, I do consider Unearthed Arcana a viable option, so if it's something that has been published, soft published in Unearthed Arcana, I will use that. If it's something that has been published in Unearthed Arcana and has been updated in an official published release, I use the most recent current version as the thought process is that is the most balanced. And again, in the link in the video description when this comes out on YouTube at a later point, I will list all the items or the books that you need to use to be able to actually build these characters yourself, or you can just follow along here, or I also provide you the downloadable copy of the PDF of the character sheet, so that way you can just go ahead and do it yourself. So, that being said, we're going to jump into tonight's character. Um, tonight is... Uh, gonna be Beowulf. Now, I gotta be honest, I was a little bit shocked when I got this suggestion. I actually got a fair amount of, like, literary and biblical heroes and characters. I can't remember if they're all from the same person or not, 
Uh, and I'm actually sorry because it was so long ago I may have lost the person who actually suggested this. So, I'm going to be building Beowulf tonight. If you're unfamiliar with Beowulf, um, there was a really weird CG movie starring Sean Bean, I think Angelina Jolie, and Anthony Hopkins in like 2007. But I'm not going to base this off of that because one, I never saw it because it kind of looks stupid to me. Um... But two, uh, I guess I'm a purist in that I'll probably build it off of the original literature. So Beowulf was, I think, the, I believe, and I could be wrong on this, the oldest existing epic poem in the English, like, Germanic languages. So it was written, in, I think, I believe the original language that was written in is dead now. So it's only in different versions of translations and it is an epic poem telling the story of a hero named Beowulf and his rise to fame and his great deeds and his eventual fall at the end of the story. Um, it, ha it deals with a lot of areas uh, and locations that I'm not really too familiar with, but it seems like it's all Germanic in nature. Um, so basically the story of Beowulf is that he was a up-and-coming kind of hero person and there's this village uh or city and i can't remember it starts with an h it's like huronaut or something like that and it was ruled by a king hrothgar which i've now learned i've known the name hrothgar from dwarves and very other uh sources of literature where that becomes a common name and i never realized that it was most likely just a rip from the king from the story of beowulf so uh King Hrothgar, he is plagued by a creature called Grendel. And you actually may have heard that term. I'd actually heard the term Grendel and Beowulf, believe it or not, first from Xena Warrior Princess. As towards the end of those the Xena series, they just started jumping all around. They were German, or I'm sorry, they were Grecian, they were Roman. Then they had a little bit of Norse thrown in there. They had uh, Chinese history. So they really just threw everything in there. So that's where I learned of Beowulf and Grendel. But anyway, Grendel, and uh, I don't believe, I actually did read the poem, by the way, when I was in the seventh grade, I read a, a translation of it. And uh, Tolkien also did a translation of it more recently. Um, so I haven't actually read the Tolkienian translation. I'm curious what the difference is. He kind of knew his languages, so. Um, Long story short, Grendel is sort of a troll-like creature. Uh, so if you can imagine, um, the one that, I, again, that I have as my visual reference in my brain was from that Xena Warrior Princess episode. He was sort of like a troll meets Pumpkinhead. And when I Pumpkinhead, I mean the villain from the movie Pumpkinhead. Um, anyway, a troll-like entity who would come in at night when King Hrothgar's warriors were sleeping and he would devour them. And the story goes that the sounds of joy uh, plagued Grendel so and caused him physical pain. So he would come and he would eat the sleeping warriors, which doesn't make a lot of sense if they're not being joyful, making noise. But he would go and do that every night. And the king had sent countless people to try to stop Grendel. No one could defeat Grendel. So Beowulf shows up, him and his group of retainers, and they say, we're going to take care of this Grendel for you. King Hrothgar, and in turn, we want XYZ. So, Beowulf is a younger uh, guy at this point in his life, and he pretends to fall asleep, and Grendel comes in and goes to get him, and he wakes up and he grabs Grendel's arm, and they grapple each other, and they are locked down in this epic battle, and uh, Beowulf actually rips Grendel's whole arm off, arm and claw included. Grendel flees in pain. Beowulf shows the arm to the king the next morning and says, look, we did it. Everything's great. Um, but that night, Grendel's mother comes back and actually kills a few more of the guards. So now they need to set out to defeat Grendel's mother. Uh, all the while, I think, not knowing that Grendel had actually died from the arm removal later on. So they track her to a lake, and they realize that her lair is underneath the lake. Um... And they take a couple of people, don't want to go. Beowulf gets a sword from one of the king's, like, advisors. Some sort of supposed to be magic sword. It's like Hrothning or something is the name of the sword. It's irrelevant in a little bit. He dives down underneath. 
finds Grendel's dead body as well as the dead bodies of a couple of the guards that had died. He goes off to take on uh, Grendel's mother using this new magic sword, supposedly. Sword is completely dull, does nothing, forgets that. He pulls a sword out of Grendel's mother, decapitates her. Grendel's, either Grendel's mother or Grendel's, or Grendel's blood hits the sword. It dissolves the entire sword except for the hilt. Um, and he takes both heads up to the king, and he's treated as a hero uh, for doing that. And then the story kind of jumps 50 years down the line, and it's now Beowulf is basically a king of the kingdom where he came from, and uh, someone stole a golden cup from a dragon's treasure hoard, and the dragon's on a rampage, breathing fire everywhere. Beowulf tells his, uh, his men... Don't worry about it. I'll take on the dragon myself. He goes in there with his new sword that he's got, that he got from the uh, the king. as like the king's heirloom weapon became his weapon when he defeated Grendel's mother. Uh, he goes on to take on the dragon, and all of his men don't follow after him per his answer, or per his request, except for one guy named Wiglaf, who goes with Grendel, uh, to take on the dragon. Um, and Grendel, or I'm sorry, Grendel, Beowulf actually manages to defeat the dragon, but suffers a mortal wound in the process. He is dead, so is the dragon. Uh, he leaves, I believe, most of his uh, estate to, I think, to Wiglaf, actually, who chides everybody else for saying that if you were here, Beowulf would still be alive. This is all your fault. Um, and that's the story of Grendel. A very condensed version of an epic poem. Uh, that's my telling of how, how it goes. So based on that... We don't actually have a whole lot of information to build uh, on Beowulf's character, um, which is a good thing and a bad thing, right? It gives us a lot of leeway uh, on how to build the character because we don't have a ton of hardcore things to, to concrete things to build off of. We also won't have to do much in the way of homebrew, if any, and we won't have to uh, also do... It won't be a long episode. The longest part will probably be my explanation of the story of Beowulf that we just went through. So we're also going to try, because of this, uh, the D&D Beyond route. Because I remembered that I can actually export uh, character sheets from D&D Beyond into PDF, and then we can upload those to the file so you can still get the character sheet, but it'll all be done up nicely in D&D Beyond. So, without further ado for the third time, let's jump in. So here I am on D&D Beyond. Um, I have, uh, a pay for D&D &D Beyond subscription, and I have most of the character building things purchased in D&D &D Beyond, um, but this is not an, uh, not in any way sponsored by D&D &D Beyond, or as an endorsement of them. If you want to go do your own research and see if you like D&D &D Beyond, go for it. Alright, so, we're gonna name him Beowulf. Uh, and this will also be like a very brief tutorial, I guess, at the same time on how to use D&D Beyond. So, we're going to use homebrew content. We don't need that. We'll add all the content, though we probably won't need it. Um, the only thing that I want to do here is scores on top, because I don't like modifiers on top, personally. Alright, Beowulf is a human. So, we're going to go with variant human, as we typically do here on the show. All right, language is not really important. We're going to give him perception because it's what we always give everybody. We're going to give Beowulf the grappler feat. Uh, where is it? Do I not? Do I really just not have grappler? Oh, because we don't know what his strength is. Let's go forward. Um, all right, so class for Beowulf. What do we know about him? We know that he can wield a sword. We know that he is very strong because he was able to grapple with Grendel and hold Grendel there and then eventually rip Grendel's arm off at the shoulder joint. So Beowulf is clearly strong. He has a, the capability of wielding a sword. We know he's a noble. And we know that he wore armor because it was stated in the fight with Grendel's mother that he was saved from death by the armor that he wore. So, what does that mean for us? Well, that means we're looking at one of a few characters, right? We're looking at probably either a fighter, a paladin, or a barbarian. 
He is not overly religious. He's religious as people are in the day, but not enough to consider him a paladin. And I'm not going to go into the whole concept of is he or isn't he a holy warrior, because it doesn't really touch on that. So no paladin. Fighter, nice and simple. Uh, we could just go probably a champion fighter, as he does end up being a champion in the end. Um, or barbarian is another potential option for us. Um, the only reason I would say Barbarian is because of just the, the massive strength boost, but he doesn't really see, he is quite common collected and a ruler of a land, not that a Barbarian can't be a king, but he doesn't really seem like he goes into a rage, he's actually pretty collected the whole time. So I'm leaning Fighter. We're going to go here in D&D Beyond, we're going to add 12 levels of Fighter. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we're actually going to jump to uh, Ability <coughs> Scores because I want to go back and get that feat. So we chose standard array, uh, and then you can see here our options. So we're going to give him 15 strength. Uh, we're going to probably give him, just because of the nature of these things, he's going to have eight intelligence. I'm not saying that Beowulf wasn't intelligent. He actually was quite intelligent, but just that's the way the nature of these things go. He was a great warrior. So we're going to give him, uh, we'll give him this and this. And he was also a king, and he was observant. So that's our stats here at the start. Actually, let's swap. Let's make this 14 and this 13. And we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, will we? No. We're going to go back to what we had. Okay. So let's go back to the race. We're going we're gonna to ignore the language. We'll just give him... Draconic. It doesn't matter because we don't really deal with languages too much on a Pilt's character. We're going to give him the plus one to... Let's see. We're going to give him... I think... There we go. Gra grappler? Where is it? Grappler. Um, uh, advantage and attack rolls against creature you're grappling. You can use your action to try to pin a creature grappled by you. And we're going to go ahead and give him a plus one strength. And we're going to give him, I guess, a plus one con? No. We'll give him a plus one intelligence. We're going to round out that intelligence up to at least a 10. We'll give him perception. All right. So, proficiencies. He's going to have athletics, as we saw, because he was able to grab uh, onto the... Uh, the Grendel with no issues. And we're, I think we're going to give him... I think we're going to give him insight, because he seemed to be pretty insightful. He was a two-handed weapon... Or, sorry, I think it's just a singular hand. We don't really get too much description on the sword. Actually, you know what? We're going to give him defense, uh, because we know his armor protected him that one time. So we have all of our options here, and again, you can see if you're unfamiliar with D&D Beyond, the ones that I have. This one was on our Tharkana, the Brute. Uh, we have the Critical Role Gunslinger, uh, and then you can have any... Te uh, Templar is a homebrew one that I made, uh, based off of a dear friend's homebrew class, uh, Firebringer Axel. We're just going to give him Champion. And then we're going to get an additional fighting style later on. And uh, we can't choose defense again because we already have defense. Let's see if it'll let us. It will? That shouldn't be possible. Can't take a fighting style more than once, even if you get to choose so later. So it let us do it. So that's an issue with D&D Beyond. Uh, we'll call it... We'll go for dueling. Um, okay. So we're going to jump forward and we'll do our proficiency bonuses and things later. So his background is a noble. It's gonna get a. We'll give him chess set, and we'll give him elvish as a language, just to get the choices out of there. Uh, he. We're gonna give him starting equipment. We'll give him chainmail. Uh, we'll give him a martial weapon and a shield. Actually, we'll give him. Yep, yeah, we'll give him a longsword, light crossbow, and explorer's pack. We'll add all this into his character sheet. And then <coughs> we'll go and actually view his character sheet. So here is the sheet as it stands right now. Uh, you can see there are several choices we haven't made. 
but uh, you can see it does have like sleight of hand, stealth, and acrobatics from the remarkable athlete feature, um, which is why I wanted to also show off again D and D Beyond because it does a lot of the work that I would be typing out all of these things in myself. They're now all listed here. So, fighting style, second wind, action surge, uh, crits on a nineteen or twenty. Here's the remarkable athlete, indomitable one time. His extra fighting style. We're gonna go here and we're gonna equip his longsword. We're gonna give him plate mail because he's a 12th level fighter, so he's gonna get plate mail. Plate. We're gonna go here, we're gonna remove chain mail. We're gonna give him the plate and a shield. And we equip equipped his longsword. So you can see here it's already added in uh, the dueling bonus. And the light crossbow here as well. I assume he probably could use a crossbow. Um, fits with the time. Here's his uh, grappler feet. Um, so here you can see all the benefits it gives us. And then this is just a little bit about the description about his being a noble. No real notes or creatures. And that is just a very generic run through. But you can see he's got all of his stuff pretty much here. So now we can actually go in back and add in all of the ability scores we want to add. So we're going to go here. I'm going to go to edit character. We're going to go to class and we're going to go start here and we're going to go with a feat. Let's see, what are we going to pick? We're going to pick resilient dexterity. We're going to jump here. We're going to go with ability score improvement. We're going to give him plus two to strength. Uh, let's go here. We'll give him, uh, let's see, observant, where's observant, observant, and we'll choose intelligence, because he's pretty smart. Um, let's see what that puts us right now. So this puts us at this point right now. I was thinking he probably deserves a 20 strength. He did rip the arm off of a troll. So we're giving him... Actually, you know what? I gave him resilient dex, but I actually don't feel like I should. I don't think it really fits. I'm going to actually... Oops. We're going to go back and we're going to change that. So... Where did I do that? I did that right here. So we're actually going to undo that. And we're going to give him... Alert. He was never caught by surprise. We're going to go here. So we're going to give him another... Oops, not a feat. We're going to give him plus two strength. We give him that, that 20 strength. And I think here, where we took Observant, we're actually just going to go with... Uh, a plus one dex and a plus one intelligence. So if we go and look at this... He should now have 20 strength, 14 dex, 14 con, 10 intelligence, 12 wisdom, 10 charisma. He's alert because he was able to keep his eyes closed and pretend to be asleep and attack the Grendel uh, and rip its arm off. I mean, that's sort of the problem, guys. Like I said, we're basing it off of a very generic character that was described very loosely in an epic poem from many, many, many years ago. So this is what we've got. Um, and here, I guess we can just do a quick run through of the character sheet. Uh, so you can see here, he's got the standard stats are 20, 14, 14, 10, 12, 10. Uh, you can see we've got proficiency in athletics, history, insight, perception, persuasion. And we add half of our proficiency bonus to any dex, uh, con or, uh, strength checks we don't have proficiency in. So acrobatics. Sleight of hand and stealth in this instance. Um, he has his basic attack is just a longsword, which had a couple different names as they changed throughout the time. We've got his unarmed strike is in here. Um, he can grapple someone as an action uh, to pin a grappled creature, rather. If he succeeds, uh, both are restrained until the grapple ends. Um, because he's got indomitable action surge, he makes three attacks per uh, action. Uh, and then again, we have just give him plate mail and a shield to go with his longsword. 
And under his feats and features and traits, we can see he has a defense, so his AC is 21. Um, he can do second wind to heal a D10 plus 12 HP. Action surge, like we said, he crits on a 19 or 20. He's got that remarkable athlete feat we talk, feature we talked about. Indomitable to fail one failed saving throw, or reroll one failed saving throw. Dueling for a little extra damage that you can see here, a D8 plus 7 on all of his attacks. Um, he's got the grappler feat here, and he's alert, so we can't be surprised. I, guys, I really don't know what else to say. So again, like I was saying before, we can go here and we can say export sheet. And this will turn that sheet into a PDF, which is what I will upload to the folder. If we zoom out, you can see everything's all done up very nice and easy for you to read. So there should be no issues on questions on how to, on what this means. So I think that that's a pretty good compromise. So we're going to jump back over here, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this link in the chat to It Builds Character. Uh, we're going to start the music over, because it's the end of the show. And we can go here to the IBC Plan uh, link that I just posted in the Twitch chat, which will also be in the link in the description. So you can see this is Season 1. Here's all the characters, we all 29 characters we built in Season 1, and a link to their episode on YouTube. And here is season two. So far, we built Alucard from Castlevania, and tonight we built Beowulf. Once that episode is done and uploaded to YouTube, I will put the link here so you can back and view it whenever you want. And you can see next week we have Gilgamesh. Then we have the Bloodstorm Blade, which was actually a... Um, if I'm thinking about what I'm thinking it is, it is a character type, uh, basically a type of character that was designed in 3.5, but I could be wrong. Then we have Red or Ash from Pokemon, Doctor Strange, and so on down the list. You can see we've got uh, Wargreymon, so we got a Digimon in here. we got Samson, another biblical uh, hero. Um, Kirito from Sword Art Online. Oh, here is the Strider class, was what I was thinking of from Dragon's Dogma. We got Ben 10, that'll be weird. Uh, we got a Bionicle character, Final Fantasy X. This is here we got another option. Most viable character with four separate classes. Vulcan Skull from the Power Rangers, All Might, Kaladin from Stormlight Archive, and Percy Jackson from Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Or Heroes of Olympus, or what have you. So that gets us through to 31st of July. We still have plenty more to go though, so if you guys have any suggestions, you can feel free to leave them at the end of this video or uh, comment them to me on social media in some form, and I will add them to the list. Uh, and then again, I will show you here that shouldn't happen. That's weird. Well, this is supposed to, let's see if we change this to capital IBC. Sorry, guys. This should not happen. I wanted to have this take you to the folder with all the character sheets. All right, we'll have to change that. But anyway, here it is. Here's the, the Google Drive folder that's publicly accessible by you guys with all of the character sheets if you want to go check out one of the other characters that I have built in the past. Oops. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of It Builds Characters. Sorry it wasn't as crazy or, or mind-blowing as some of the ones have been in the past. There wasn't too much to talk about. Um, and as always, I suggest that if you guys have suggestions or have strong opinions on what's going on, uh, come out to the chat and watch these episodes live with me. I take suggestions from you guys consistently on how to alter and update these different character classes and how I should make things different or changed or tweaked however you say they should be. So anyway guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll see you next week when we build Gilgamesh.